Hey everyone, John Reed here, author of 50 Things to See with a Telescope. Welcome to the Homeschool Astronomy Challenge Series. In this video, we're going to learn how to use binoculars to see objects in space. This is Learn to Stargaze. So when I was a kid, we always had a good pair of binoculars around. We lived outside the city on Prince Edward Island and our skies were dark. I'd frequently go out and look at the stars mostly with just my eyes, but sometimes with binoculars. Unfortunately, I never saw anything cool. When I was in high school, my dad even bought a small telescope for himself and let me use it, and I never saw anything cool with that either. The reality was, I didn't know how to use either binoculars or a telescope. It wasn't until after my first degree that I actually learned to stargaze and learned to see cool stuff in the sky. Now, before I had kids, I volunteered with the Mount Diablo Astronomical Society in the San Francisco Bay Area. Our job was to teach kids how to use telescopes and binoculars to view objects in the night sky. I'd have both binoculars and telescopes set up, but for the most part, the kids ignored the binoculars, probably because the telescopes we had just set up were so darn cool. In my experience, if you set up a cool telescope on the side of the road, you'll gather a crowd and suddenly you have an impromptu sidewalk star party. I always figured that if you stand on the corner with binoculars trying to see globular cluster M22, someone is likely to call the police. The best stargazing experience I ever had with binoculars was a guided tour of the sky by astronomer Tony Schellack. This was in an open field an hour from the city with completely dark skies. We looked at the Andromeda Galaxy, M22, the Lagoon Nebula, and a few others. This experience really showed me what binoculars can do. But first, why should we use binoculars for stargazing? Well, there's a bit of a debate in the amateur stargazing community as to what is a better way to enter the hobby, with binoculars or with a telescope. But really, if you're not already stargazing without a telescope or without binoculars, you're probably not gonna get much enjoyment out of either one. That's why for the first 21 videos in this series, you only needed your eyes. So I went and held a little unscientific poll on Twitter. I wanted to know from astronomers what they used first for stargazing, binoculars or telescopes. And here was the result. And I was more than a little surprised. 85.7% of astronomers responded that they started with a telescope. This was shocking to me because most amateur astronomers, at least those in the astronomy club that I'm a member of, recommend to others that they start with binoculars. So why did so many amateur astronomers start with a telescope? I think there are at least three possible explanations here. The first is that telescopes are far more popular for stargazing. They're seen as the right tool for the job. The second is more subtle, and I think this is the main reason, and that's this, that there is a fascination with the telescope itself, independent of stargazing. In other words, people just like telescopes. A third possible explanation is survivorship bias. Imagine two groups of, say, 100 aspiring astronomers. The first group is given binoculars, and the second group is each given a telescope. You check back a year later to see who kept up with the hobby, and for whatever reason, the people who started with telescopes are more likely to be the ones who kept stargazing. Well, the main reason why some folks suggest that you start stargazing with binoculars is because it's something you probably already have around the house, and because choosing a first telescope is a very complicated process. Choosing binoculars is pretty easy, especially if you already own them. But to be honest, if someone had talked me out of buying my first telescope and I've gotten binoculars instead, I probably would have quit astronomy and I'd still be in finance and accounting. Another reason some people recommend binoculars is because you get to use both eyes and using both eyes can increase the contrast and hue of your targets, which helps make the targets like star clusters easy to resolve and well, more pleasing to the eye. So what can you see with binoculars in the night sky? Well, stars, lots of stars. Binoculars allow your eyes to gather much more light than your eyes alone. This allows you to observe bright open star clusters, bright nebula like M8 and M42 and the Andromeda galaxy, though it's always best to attempt to see these types of objects from dark skies. Binoculars are also great to observe certain double stars, features on the surface of the moon, like the lunar seas and bright craters, as well as Jupiter's four Galilean moons. Let's talk for a moment about binocular specifications. Written somewhere on your binoculars 
are two numbers separated by an x. For example, 10x50. Magnification is the first number listed on your binoculars. Now, binoculars typically come in magnifications of 7, 8, or 10, with zoomable binoculars starting at 10 and going all the way up to 20 times magnification. Higher magnification shrinks your field of view. Field of view is a measure of how much of the sky you can see through your optics. Therefore, higher magnification means less sky, which means an object might be harder to find. Aperture is usually the second number listed on your binoculars. Aperture is the diameter of the primary lens. Larger diameters bring in more light and make dim objects easier to see. And they also increase your resolution. Resolution is the ability to separate details that are close together. You should also know the parts of binoculars. Here we have the central hinge. It's for adjusting the distance between the eyes. This is the focus wheel or handle. You'll use this whenever you pick up your binoculars and whenever you alternate between viewing objects at different distances. Keep in mind that objects in space will use the same focus because they're all simply so far away. One of the eye cups will rotate. This is called the diopter. You'll see a little plus and minus sign beside the eye cup. The diopter accounts for the variations in prescription between your two eyes. Some binoculars have removable or adjustable eye cups. These are mainly to help those who wish to use binoculars with glasses. Note that if you have glasses, you might want to try binoculars without glasses and simply adjust the focus to your prescription. Some binoculars come with a zoom feature. For the most part, when looking at space, I recommend keeping this at the lowest setting. Only use the zoom feature to try and split a double star or zoom in on the moon. So if you're going to learn to use binoculars to look at objects in space, you need to know how to use binoculars to see things on Earth. If you're following along in the 50 things to see with a telescope activity workbook, there are detailed instructions on how to use binoculars on page 19. But I'll also tell you right now. So for me, I'm gonna remove my glasses. First, look through the binoculars at a faraway target and adjust the binoculars around the central hinge so that the image is centered in both eyes. It should not look like it does in the movies with two merging circles. You should only see one circle. In the case of these binoculars, the diopter is on the right. In the case of my zoom binoculars, the diopter is on the left. Close the eye on the side of the binoculars that has the diopter and then adjust the main focus until the image is clear. Then close the eye without the diopter, open the eye with the diopter and turn the diopter until the image is clear. Now with both eyes open, the image should be clear and you only need to change the primary focus when you switch targets. Take some time to practice looking at things on land before moving to the skies. Now you're ready to observe something in space. First, check the focus by looking through the binoculars at a bright star. Turn the focus wheel until the star is a point of light, or at least as small as you can make it. Then choose a target and try to find the target without the binoculars. If you can't see it with the unaided eye, use a map to determine exactly where the target is using the constellations as a reference. Now with your eyes fixed on the target, move the binoculars up to your face. You should be able to see the target within the field of view without having to pan the binoculars around. If you can't see the target through the binoculars, try again without the binoculars and then slowly bring the binoculars up to your face for a second try. Now, if you simply hold up binoculars and try to view a star, if you're like me, it's gonna look a bit like this. Now, I don't own a good stargazing chair or a zero gravity chair, so when I stargaze with binoculars, I find myself sitting like this, or this, or leaning up against a tree or a wall like this. Now, if this is you, there are a few options. The first is to buy a monopole, basically a big stick you put the binoculars on. The second is to buy image stabling binoculars. Now these are quite expensive, about the same as a pretty nice telescope, but they work great. Finally, there is the tripod with the counterweight. Now I had a system like this for years, but honestly, if you're at this stage where you're thinking of purchasing a system like this, you might as well just get a really good telescope. The counterweight system is a bit of a pain and a telescope would be a lot more fun. One of the most challenging tasks for a beginner stargazer is finding targets. If you want help choosing a target, here are three great options. First, the book Binocular Highlights by Gary Saronic. It's a great book. I use it all the time. 
Second, you can download the Explore the Universe program from the Royal Astronomical Society of Canada. All of their targets can be found with binoculars. And third, you can check out my book, 50 Things to See with a Telescope, where the binocular targets are marked with this symbol. That said, here are a few great targets to get you started. Well, if the moon is up, you might as well observe it. See how many lunar seas you can see. Do you see any bright craters? If it's winter, take a look at the Pleiades through binoculars. They're not too far away from Orion's belt. Just don't get the Pleiades confused with the Little Dipper. Now, if it's spring, try to find the Beehive Cluster. It can be a little bit challenging due to lack of reference stars, but if you're in dark skies and can pick out the constellation Cancer, it's right in the center. If it's summer, try to find the coat hanger. This is a great target for binoculars. Use the binoculars and pan around the sides of the summer triangle. You'll run into it eventually. And if it's the fall, try to find the Andromeda galaxy. I use these stars in Cassiopeia to form an arrow that points right at the galaxy. Well, I hope you enjoyed learning to observe the night sky with binoculars. Please subscribe so you don't miss the next video. And remember, the future is looking up.